Hey there, welcome back to Reddit XO, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. Leaving him was the biggest mistake of my life. Preface All of the names mentioned in this article have been changed. The grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. Sometimes, the green you see is sewage clogging up in the distance. Dave, my ex husband, and I met in college six years ago. We were both 22 at the time, and to say the sparks flew right away would be an understatement. He asked me to marry him after just two years of dating, and I said yes. Dave is a brilliant, hilarious, and very creative individual. He majored in digital animation and hoped to be the digital Walt Disney, as he put it. He had a knack of articulating the worlds he built and the people in his head in such depth that you couldn't help but be amazed. He was determined to find job in his field once we finished, but getting into show business, much alone animation is difficult. We'd find out soon enough in our marriage. We relocated from our native state of Washington to California in order to be closer to Hollywood. He pursued odd jobs and freelance animation projects to try to get his foot in the door with any of the large animation companies, while I studied teaching and became a school teacher. For the first couple of years, I accepted that this was the way to come into the business. My optimism eventually gave way to despair. Los Angeles isn't inexpensive, and living on a teacher's income and the few assignments he'd receive wasn't going to be sustainable in the long run. I was becoming annoyed with his lack of development. My frustration quickly turned to resentment, which permeated every part of our marriage. This went on for three years. Nothing occurred just as it seemed that he could get his big break. Nonetheless, he had pleaded with me that he had to keep to his plan, that his efforts will be rewarded. With all of the expenses we were barely keeping up with, I could see it. Our relationship began to deteriorate throughout this period, and by fall off, I mean tumble off the edge of a deep pit. Dave's dream was turning into my nightmare, and I couldn't bear being near him at times. Every waking minute, he'd be working on his dumb projects, as I call them. Yes, we went on dates. We made buddies with whom we would hang with. But Dave's inability to begin a career in animation was weighing heavily on me. I resolved to work off my frustrations in the gym, and I did so. When I wasn't working, I went to the gym on a regular basis from 2018 to 2019. It was there that I met Kevin. Kevin is a native of Los Angeles. Through and through, he's a collie boy. I wasn't in terrible condition when I began, which is why I believed Kevin was interested in me. It began with some casual conversation, as it usually does. His attention got more intense as I made headway in my gains. I was aware of what he was up to, but I did nothing to prevent it from occurring. I was so unsatisfied with Dave's life that I welcomed Kevin's attention. Dave took note of how my body was changing and was grateful for it, but I'd stop returning that love. I began to look at him with contempt, and in retrospect, I realized he didn't deserve it. I withheld love and closeness from him, which was a nasty, filthy thing to do to him. It would not, however, be the last. Things between Kevin and I improved as the months passed. I was going to see him outside the gym quite soon. We were going on full-fledged dates. I'd lie to Dave, telling him I was going to hang out with work pals, but actually I'd spend the nights at Kevin's, and certainly those evenings would be spent doing more than simply watching TV and exchanging fitness advice. Dave was completely unaware of my adultery, but he was fully aware that I was dissatisfied with how things were going between us. But he worked hard to make me happy. He was doing all he could to help us, and all I could offer him was apathy. It struck Dave like a truck when I informed him I wanted a divorce in August 2019. I told him I couldn't wait any longer for his dream to come true. I wanted to create a family, and I knew that because of where we were financially, emotionally, and psychologically, I would never be able to do so with him. He begged and implored that I not do it. He continued asking me why I was doing this to him and how I could do such a thing to him. A part of me felt horrible because I knew I was abandoning him for Kevin, but I knew in my heart that this was what I needed. We were still in our early twenties. He may be able to recover from this. We were simply not meant to be. Those were the justifications I gave myself. I opted not to ruin him in the divorce since we lived in California. All I asked for was half of what I had contributed to the marriage. We were living in a one-bedroom apartment with no real assets, so there wasn't much to obtain in the first place. Meanwhile, he, our friends, and our families were unaware of Kevin's existence. Kevin, on the other hand, was aware 
that my marriage was in trouble. He was the one who persuaded me to abandon Dave for him. By November 2019, I had divorced Dave and was gradually transitioning to a full-time relationship with Kevin. By the time Kavit arrived in California, I'd understood what a terrible decision it had been. Hanging around with Kevin and living with him were two very different experiences. I won't go into specifics, but it occurred to me how much I missed the things Dave did that Kevin didn't. Like the small sketches Dave would scribble on post-its and put in places he knew I'd discover them. Or the fact that he'd constantly bring me food when I was marking papers. It's all the small things that have begun to add up. I also realized that newer doesn't always mean better when it comes to S. Dave new things about me S that Kevin never cared to discover. We H up. That's precisely what we did. There was never any making of love. There were no emotional moments spent together. And now I'm confined with him. For the first several months, I assured myself that this was correct. However, by June 2020, the realization that messed up royally had begun to seep in. But this was also at the time that I'd let everyone know that I'd moved into a new relationship. Dave, as expected, was devastated. He sent me a lengthy email about how he was extremely saddened by the thought that I'd moved on after only six months or so, but he ultimately just wanted me to be happy. I really wanted to tell him everything right then and there, but I knew I couldn't. I'd cheated on him for months, lied to him, and basically abandoned him for another guy. I couldn't bear the thought of doing that to him. But reading his comments tore my soul apart, knowing that my own selfishness had cost me this lovely soul. All because I couldn't simply sit down, shut up, and wait for his plan to work. Fate, it appears, has a sense of irony, since only a few months after that email, I found out Dave had paired up with two other freelancers he'd worked with on previous projects to form their own firm. Because of the large migration from Los Angeles, obtaining office space for the research was not difficult, and they could still work from home if they want. I also learned via a common buddy in his industry that they'd released their first project, which was becoming popular on the internet. This made me feel like a complete jerk. I was under the impression that leaving him for Kevin would set me free, but it was the exact reverse. He was the one who was set free from his selfish, demanding wife. Kevin and I divorced nearly a year to the day after I informed Dave I wanted a divorce, in August 2020. Our whirlwind affair came to an end with a gentle breeze. Months of being together revealed that we were great as F-buddies but not as a relationship. A month later, I moved into my own home. That's where I've been ever since. I'm watching Dave put his life back together while grieving the life I willfully took. I've been looking at his art station profile a lot lately, and one of his shares from today really got to me. My muse was the title of the painting, which was a completely drawn picture of female portrait. Extremely intricate, with a watermark that reads for Cassandra 21. When he did pictures of me as muse, he used to call me that. Cassandra, whatever she is, has obviously picked up all of the parts of Dave that I had shattered. I click on one of the tags and, lo and behold, she's also a digital artist, just like Dave. So, not only did he find the motivation to build his own studio during my absence, but he's also found a lady who shares his artistic drive more than I ever could. I'll carry the guilt I feel for hurting Dave and abandoning him to my grave. After lurking in this sub-anonymously for months, seeing that artwork moved me to make this post. How could I have been so dumb, obstinate, and deafeningly, deafeningly, deafeningly D, I'm not sure what I'm going to gain by sharing this. I'll never have him back, and even if he hadn't gone on, he'd never accept me back if he discovered the truth. I'm simply in so much pain, and I miss him so much. I left him for what I felt was the superior alternative, even though there was never any comparison after the event. My own self-centered desires lost me the love of my life, and now it's up to me to reflect and learn from this, and I shall do so. I'm perfectly aware that by clicking publish, I'm inviting myself to be crucified. It's not any worse than what I put myself through on a daily basis. I've been attending to therapy for the previous several months to attempt to deal with my emotions in general, but this one, this one has a snake-like bite. He was my best friend, my idol, and my first true love. But I let my own concerns about what marriage should be push me away from him and into the bed of another guy, who turned out to be nothing like the man Dave was. And now I'm afraid I'll never discover another love like that again. I simply wanted to get this off my chest someplace. Edit. To anybody who has questioned or mentioned it in comments, even some that have since been deleted, I have no intention of winning him back or even connecting with him. He's happy, healthy, 
and has met a lady much more worthy of his love than I could ever be. When the current school year ends and my lease on my present apartment expires, I plan on resigning from the school where I work and returning to Spokane. We'll be separated by thousands of miles, and there's no way I'll ever run into him since his parents have moved to Northern California. He'll never have to see or talk to me again. In terms of romance, I believe it is preferable for me to stay alone for a time. I'm 27 years old and have plenty of time to find love and build a family. First and foremost, I must work on myself. When I return home, I'll look for a new therapist and begin the process of sifting through my baggage.